Welcome to today's video, which I'm going to be reading your comments that you have left to me in the YouTube section. I will try to at least make maybe 50 to 100 comments. I have no idea how much energy I'm going to have by then, but it's what I'm trying to do right now. Today, I'm accompanied by Seth, which is half for sure in my YouTube section. He's my mod and well, say hello, Seth. Yo, what up? So there's going to be a lot of stuff here and I'm going to be taking on some questions while also I'm going to allow Seth to go through some others. We might also go for the same question at the same time. We'll see how it's going to be. It's going to be done more than likely. And I don't know how I'm going to edit this because it's the first time I'm doing something like this. This might be treated like a podcast in a way as well. But I'm going to ask you guys one thing, which is ask more stuff in the comments below as well as in the link that I'm going to be leaving below on the description because I'm going to be making a Q&A for the future wherever you can ask anything about me or any game that I played or anything directed to me. And I'm going to make another video follow up to this one where I'm going to be answering those questions any questions you have i'll be trying to answer it ask any questions you have and i'm gonna try to get back to that okay there's gonna be a lot of spanish comments as well as english ones for the sake of you as a viewer i'm gonna be splitting this into the spanish part which is gonna be near the end kind of and the english part which is gonna be right now this comment comes from the video on how to save kill and find Caligura in Final Hunger 2 comes from Justin McDonald 2102. I've still done only Marina, Levi, and Dan playthrough, with only Dan doing ending BC. Caligura and August are by far the most elusive NPCs to take out. Well, actually, the first eight playthroughs I had of the game, I didn't know who Caligura was, and I would never find him. I had no idea who he was. I had no clue that Monster was actually Caligura whenever I was, uh, you know, unaliving him, because you cannot say that word in YouTube for some reason. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, that happened to me. And August, I just had to look up a guy. I, th at least that one, I knew who he was because I had to look up a guy. But it, di it didn't matter for me because I was killing Caligura and I didn't have to find him and I didn't care who he was. What do you think, Sedu? What's your take on this? Um, honestly, same thing for me. Uh, the only time I really knew about Caligura was, uh, uh, you get, like as you said, uh, you know, after eight playthroughs, the first time I found out about him, I played as Marco. And you can sleep in one of the specific beds. Like I've seen some people sleep in the uh, bookstore bed and Caligra appears there. Uh, but yeah, definitely one of the more elusive ones. Uh, as far as August, I also had to use a guide. I, I had no clue. I even tried looking for him in the forest, like people say, and I could just not find him in the forest to save my life. Oh, you reminded me. Now that I think about it, I made a, a comment. I could try to find that comment. It's back then in Fear Hunger 2 Steam forum, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it to put it on the video. But what happens is that... <laughs> For some reason, I, I just didn't understand how Olivia worked and the way that her poison worked was so confusing and I didn't understand the damage, how the nettle worked, how condensed nettle worked, stuff like that. I didn't understand anything and I, I just hated it and it was my first playthrough of the game and I wanted to drop the game. And I have a comment in the Steam forum where I'm like asking, what the heck is the use of condensed hemlock? And nobody responded to me that. And it's still there in the Steam forum and no one responded that to me. I had to look up a video of someone one-shotting the hardest one to be able to understand what it did. And I was like, oh, that's what it does. Why did no one tell me? It's like, <laughs> what? So this is a comment from Ethan Moon Kaka, 1445. Interesting name. All right. It comes from the video, 55 tips and tricks for beginnings and advanced for Fear Hunger Termina. In my opinion, Termina is way harder. Not infinite saves, much more progress loss, much more ambushes and instant death interactions. Having crazy luck doesn't make you as strong as it would do in the first game. The map is way vega. You can't just sleep since the hunger and mind keeps consuming. In order to gain affinity with a god, you have to sacrifice special events from the circles and vice versa. Red points for certain spells. I must say that my first 24 hours of gameplay was with Olivia, so it was easy, medium, just poison and fire guard, healing with first gameplay. Okay, let's, let's slowly go with this uh, with this comment because there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. Would you like to do one and then I do and the other one and so on and on? Yeah. All right. Um, do you want to take the first question or should I do the first question? Yeah. Um, honestly, I never really had a problem with the not so infinite saves. I'm one of those kinds of people that have the mindset of do as much in the game as you can during the first hour. Because you like, if you die within the like first 10 minutes, you know, it's just 10 minutes, you're going to die more than likely anyways. I go into that, uh, these games with that set mindset. Um, and even then, like, 
The game is pretty generous from what I've noticed unless you got terrible, terrible luck and you just absolutely do not get a God of Fear and Hunger because you gotta think, you know, you have the option to buy Books of Enlightenment from Pocket Cat. You have, you know, at least five, maybe six uh, places where you can use the God of Fear and Hunger. Uh, and, you know, especially if you play on easy, I know that most people don't, but, you know, if you do end up playing on easy, each God of Fear and Hunger allows you to save up to three times. Well, yeah, I think... I think it is very important to pace yourself with the saves because it's mostly about your mental uh, how do I say this? You gotta mentally prepare for uh, saving in the right time, uh, knowing that nine saves is a lot for a playthrough where you can usually just take two hours per save or one hour per save even at times. And it's quite safe in that way that you will easily uh, be able to not need more than nine saves for the playthrough. You can also, like Seth said, you can get the God of Hunger for a free save, Book of Enlightenment for a free save, and if you're in easy mode, God of Hunger gives you three saves. You can also steal a Book of Enlightenment from a few characters of the game. So that's really good, which is actually only one, which is for you. Uh, but yes, uh, I think the infinite saves is something that is not really needed because of the following uh, topic that we're going to be talking about, which is enemy encounters. Next question, much more progress loss. Well, I, I have to disagree on this one. Personally, I think that progress doesn't really happen if you end up not taking risks. And most of the time, when it comes to fear and hunger, you don't have to commit any risk because of how short the game is, depending on how you're going to be playing it. For example, the first time that I played Fear and Hunger Termina, I was pacing myself going in kamikaze builds, kamikaze playthroughs, where I would go against enemies, knowing what they do, losing to them <clears throat> over and over again, treating it as knowledge for me. Like, for example, I see this guy with a bear trap. I see that the bear trap removes a, uh, one of my legs. I restart. I check again. I guard. I dodge the bear trap. I say, okay, so this is a pattern. Dodging the bear trap into attacking, so on and on. So now I understand. Then, then I take a real... Uh, you know, playthrough where I, if I get unlucky and I end up getting uh, nervous and end up making more, I will lose because of my own anxious, anxiousness, yeah. Because wanting to know, wanting to get more progress than I originally gotten before by my Kamigasi runs, which happens. But sometimes it can actually work pretty well to your favor. And also, there is really not a massive punish from getting to day three morning and day three afternoon. You usually get the punishments in day three night, which takes a lot for a new player to get to and even then the moon scorch are not really that threatening once you usually are able to either go for another ending because i've seen a lot of people do ending a which is the alone part the the, the way that they do it is that they get the hard and hard or they get a really strong build and they end up able to carry themselves through the end game either with mischief of rats which they can also be using with the uh, moose crush enemies as well the consensus uh but honestly it just feels like it doesn't there, that there doesn't need to be uh that much progress lost whenever you make a mistake because if you're playing like that you can easily just bounce forward with each loss because each loss is gonna be a way pro to propel you forward into the game what do you think Seth? no i 100 percent agree like um one of the things that i mainly remember about playing termina with the first game was was the first game i literally had to watch a for polo video shout out to for polo uh to figure out exactly the best route to take out the guards meanwhile in termina i was able to as you said you know learn how exactly like bear trap and everything works like in the battle and you know progress from there uh as far as the progress loss the only time i've really noticed that there's a problem with progress loss is right after the moonless fight actually because you go straight from Moonless into the church where the fathers are. And if you have the Black Steel equipped, I got some bad news for you. More than likely, you're going to end up either critting on you, critting on your allies, and then just being down either. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I, I can definitely see that being a problem. <clears throat> definitely. But yeah, other than that, one instance, I... I've honestly never really seen that much of progress loss. Um, I think what it is that, that I also can see that the enemy design the game, <clears throat> while, <clears throat> while it is that sometimes it's bullshit, like for example those Crimson Fathers, those Crimson Fathers remind me of Fear Hunger 1's design when it came to progress loss, which is you see a guard, you try to hit him on the cleaver, you lose the attack because you dodged, you lose an arm, one less arm for the whole playthrough. If, if it happens again, you're dead, have no arm. You're not going to be playing like that unless you want to challenge yourself. <clears throat> Same with, uh, for example, the guy that has paralysis darts. If you allow the darts to go go out, you are dead, you lose. Uh, or the harvest man, you end up with a fiber harvest man, you miss all your attacks on the head or the torso, you lose. And that's where progress 
progress loss is happening. Whenever Termina, when, when in Termina you fight something, you usually have a chance to see and to make mistakes to be to be alive once uh, you take out something. And you also get a really good character early game, which is Avela, which is going to carry you throughout the early game because of her stun as well as the ability to one-shot most early enemies in the torso, moving them and giving you a power-up against getting soul stones for free if you know how to get them. I think there's a lot of ways to prevent that. I was going to say real quick, that actually made me think, like, one of the things that I feel helps with Termina in terms of press, you know, is that there's a whole lot more green herbs. I know the, you know, the meme, like, oh yeah, rusty nail, ha, ha, ha. but let's, let's face it, let's, let's face facts, you know, how many of us have died because we stepped on a rusty nail? Yes, uh, that is something that I, I'm really thankful that it doesn't exist in Termina, unless you play Uh, but rusty nails will also be one of the biggest progress loss if you're not paying attention, and you can easily just read chat if you're streaming and just forget that there's a rusty nail or you can just be called by somebody in your house or anything or you can just just ignore it and just run past it especially if you have dash or moving fast will happen and if you're playing on the harder difficulty there's gonna be bird traps and those bird traps are as dangerous as Termina but in Fear Hunger 1 they are everywhere I feel like yeah. to me at least I've seen a lot of them I could be wrong though but in Termina there's only two places that have bird traps I think. And once you know them, they're not a threat and they also lead up in the lead up areas where you can see them easily. Oh, I think yeah. you're right with the bear traps. Yeah. Moving on to the next one. Then. Would you like to read it? The third one? Yeah. Uh, much more ambushes and insta-death interaction. Um, I feel like that there's a whole lot less insta-death interaction compared to, you know, the first game. Again, if we go back to the guard, if you don't know to guard that second attack, you're dead within the first five minutes. I can honestly say with Termina, the only way that would happen where you're dead within the first five minutes is if you think, oh, there's this axe wielding maniac that just killed another person right in front of me. I'm pretty sure he'll be easy. That's one thing I gotta say about the game. And I said it before in the podcast, in the New Gods podcast, that Termina eases you into the content that it's going to be showing you by showing you how threatening it is and how scary it is for attacking you. Fair Hand 1 just drops you into that guard, just drops you into Manivas, which are going to make it so that you're going to have food loss for the whole game. And if you get a Worm Juice, Usually will be poisoned forever if you don't have white viral. Um, then you have the dogs that one shot you with a coin toss. If you stay up for too long or if you're playing on terror reservation or hard mode, if you go for the main entrance, you just die because the dogs are way faster. And there's two packs of dogs, two packs of dogs of two dogs each. So if you kill one pack, you have the other one to deal with. So pretty much four dogs to deal with at the start of the game. Now, uh, Fear Hunger 2, you go to the left, you see a guy, like I said, a maniac with an axe. You are shown that the guy is strong for killing just a character. I don't even know if it's a... At the first time of the game, you don't even know if it's a human or a ghoul or anything. You have no idea. And you just you, you are just thinking, did I mess up by going this place? Did I kill a character because of this? And that kind of shit happens. And you usually are just straight up scared in that fight. You're not going to take it. And when you take it, you lose an arm. When you take it, you stand forever by the contest. You usually lose. You're not supposed to win that fight. Unless you have a gun with Levi. Then you can easily win it. But um, if you go to a right, you get shot. And that shot does 10 damage to you. The sound warns you that it's going to be something scary. That it explodes your uh, brain. Making you think that, oh shit, I just got one shot. Oh shit, I just took a lot of damage. Check it, it's just 10 damage. But you were warned, that guy with a gun is scary. You gotta be careful. And if you, if you initiate with a, a fight with that person, with that character, even though they're slow, you're usually gonna have enough time to either run away because they have a chance to not shoot even. And if you decide to fight, you might win, but it's not something that the game sh uh, allows you to do freely because it can do 68 damage each shot, which is a lot, or 80 if you get unlucky. The Moose Core Child can also be easily dodged and you can also farm free hits there as well. And the guys that are sitting in the house, can you can easily dodge the glass shards. There's so much you can just evade in a way that there's not going to be ambushes or instant death interactions. And even if you see that a path is blocked because of an enemy, like the other house with the three uh, villagers, you can go back, go all the way around easily. The only ambush I can accept in this comment is that there's a mob. There's a mob that happens mm. that whenever that happens, it is a chance for it to be uh, encountered. That is, I would say it's a great mechanic for me because it always keeps you on your toes. You are even uh, someone who knows how the game works. You're still going to be always expecting the mob to happen. Oh, and yeah. yeah, that one I can say that ambushes, that one will be hard. There's uh, also, one that, oh, sorry, you go ahead. There's also the chance 
to find the random cocoon villager that runs towards you and screams. Yep, that one always gets my blood pumping. And that's a great RNG. That's completely unlucky you get that. It is designed to happen at some point. You don't even know where it is till you play the game. And that's just designed yeah. to happen. Being lucky. Uh, as far as the instant death side of things, there's only one part of instant death that makes me kind of upset. Uh, and that would be the uh, bungee trap, you know, in the forest. Because there's not even a coin toss or anything like that. No, you just step on it, you're dead. Yeah, that's the only part of the game where I felt like it was truly Fear Hunger 1, where I made a mistake that I feel like I shouldn't have been punished for so heavily. Uh, just those traps in the forest are the only ones that you are not shown. Because if you step on a mine, you're dumb. <laughs> Straight up, you, you're, you're, you're just silly because you see them. Or you're colorblind. Or you're colorblind, yep. <laughs> like you see them and it's like, oh, I'm going to run into it. Or maybe you were running again from an enemy and then then it's when uh, you, you, can, you can step on it. But you, if you see it and you step on it willingly, <clears throat> well, how it is. Now, bear traps are not insta kill because you can regrow limbs in Fear Hunger 2, thankfully. So I would say yeah. those are out of the question. All right, next question. Having crazy luck doesn't make you as strong as it would do in the first game. Actually, it does. You negate most of the enemies from their key components if you have enough speed, if you have enough uh, luck to be able to get Iron Guards or the Salmon Snake, which makes you so you cannot lose limbs or arm bending, which most of the enemies rely on cutting your arm. There's almost no enemies, kind of. There's something like two or three that can remove your legs. And only if you're not paying attention, that is, by a coin flip or by an attack that is designed to go for your leg, that is not really something that you gotta look up to because it doesn't matter. Uh, but if you get lucky and you get small things amulet, you can have an extra turn easily for the whole game and you can guard in your turn that you're going to be taking damage and only attacking your extra one just completely destroying every single coin flip that's going to be coming your way or also lowering the damage you take and also nullifying your trauma which is your phobia whenever you walk you guard you completely nullify your phobia which is very useful I actually kind of completely agree because as you said, there's all things Amulet and one thing that I really like is if you're going for more of a magic playthrough, you're still able to get check checks pretty easily as well, which do boost up your magic uh, damage significantly. Um, I mean, one thing that I thoroughly enjoy about Termina compared to the first game was that a lot of things that you had to have before that were souls, so like the White Angel Soul or the, you know, the Salmon Snake Soul can be easily found in you know like random locations essentially because i remember uh i believe you were playing with rupa one time and you just found a random salmon snake rune and like a barrel and Straight i'm sitting up. here like like of course he finds it in the barrel what do you mean a chest but <clears throat> just a barrel not even a chest just yeah just a barrel and that's one of the greatest things like there's so many item checks in the game that you know you're about if to you, get you end up getting exactly you're bound to get lucky you're bound to find at least you know one small things or you know one arm guards because it, it's it's great you know especially on massive mode next question is for you the map is way bigger this one i will 100 percent agree the map is indeed bigger but i feel like while it may be bigger it's also more packed full of stuff you know like it has more locations that you can check even though like the you know the stack of boxes you can't check one on each side now it's still full of stuff there's so much going on uh there's a whole lot more alleyways and everything like that i just i, I feel like it's what's the word i'm looking for right mm, spacious maybe it is a lot more spacious yeah uh i feel like you get more bang for your buck with the map oh yeah yeah map. well i I mean, I, it's a very big map, to be honest. It's a massive map, but at least you get a map with it. If you are a new player yeah. and you don't know this, you can find the map at the start of the game, at the train, right away. And you can just use that to guide yourself. And it helps really, really well. The only time that the map sucks at the, being used is in the sewers where it's not properly mapped and you don't, you can get lost in the sewers. But that's the only thing I, I feel like. It really helps making Termina a bigger place for you to be able to add more stuff while you're always able to see where you are if you use the map. But I agree, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a bigger map. And again, like bigger isn't always bad, you know? I, I, I I feel like, because we're even getting more stuff, like a new part of the map whenever Miro does uh, come up with the uh, next patch. So I'm <laughs> excited for that, because like there's the, the, the harbor we're getting, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. A bit. The circus. You can't just leave since the hunger and mind keeps consuming. You can't just leave? Um, <clears throat> yes, you can leave. You can pause the game, be able to just 
uh, have your mind and hunger the same. Also, you can AFK at the train to get your mind back for your whole party. If you are uh, with no mind, you can just sit down at the train, leave your game running, and allow yourself to regenerate your mind. Or you can go to a pre-heal buff to get your mind back as well. But hunger is not a problem in the game. It's going to be later after the upgrade, because you can find meat pies, and meat is going to be changing that, so you cannot find meat pies anymore, as well as already cooked food. Yeah, cur uh, currently there's not a real big problem with hunger, and I feel like even if he was to remove cooked food, I mean, you'd still just get more stuff that you can use to make the cooked food so yeah. yeah i feel like it's not going to be really much of a problem at all if any mm -hmm. as far as the mind i've never really had any kind of problem with mine except for on a maso mode okay next question for you uh the next question in order to gain affinity with a god you have to sacrifice special events from circles and vice versa yeah um this one i kind of agree with but you don't have to sacrifice nearly as much as you may think uh, because there's two different types of circles. If you're not already aware, there's the uh, semi-perfect circle and then the perfect circle, I believe they're called. Um, one is able to only be used for two of the gods, that being Almir and God of Fear and Hunger. And honestly, if I'm being 100% honest, you don't really need Almir. What was your take on that, Raccoon, real quick? Almir, yay or nay? Um... I think like it's not a question about Almir or Garafinger Hunger. I think the question mostly <clears throat> mostly goes for Vinoshka. Rare. Rare. I think that's what it is for the, what they are referring to. <clears throat> because yeah. you don't really get an interaction between Almir or Garafinger Hunger. You usually just <clears throat> you know yeah. save the game on teleport. Like, it's not something you I would. But Rare gives you like a whole new place for you to explore. While Vinoshka exactly. allows you to have items or a new path that you couldn't before go to. I feel like between the two, me personally, I always go Venusha because I love the spell roots that read, but that's just me. Um, and even then, like, in case you are not aware, there's a way for you to get around needing both Sylvian and uh, Grogoroth. I believe you already have a video on this, right, Raccoon? Yes, uh, he's part of the video, actually, I think. Pretty much you can do M, which I cannot say the name, and you yeah. can do uh, Blast Sacrifice to be able to gain Venusha and Grogoroth levels m can be also so. only in one sylvian circle each and blood sacrifice can be done each time that you have more than half of your hp i think it is or like 30 yeah. hp or 31 something like that. um there are ways to get your affinity up and you can actually complete the whole affinity hexing in the video that i linked on the screen right now red points for certain spells um if you're gonna be a mage and this is like your first playthrough i highly recommend to just ignore it sadly magic is very hard to use for a playthrough where you don't really have any means to learn without losing a lot because most of the magic needs for you to focus because they're very specific on how you use them. very specific. it took me like eight or nine playthroughs to be able to use magic properly i even did osa melee weapon only because i didn't know how to use magic and it was really hard but if you're using magic i would recommend you using spice forge from osa which is the only way to play a mage without knowing exactly how magic works in a way that it would be useful right just play osa uh rave exists for a reason on those spells because those are broken as hell and spice forge removes the use of rev as well so you, you you're gonna have a fun time with that one and even then if you don't want to play as osa you're able to like if you play as marina for example you're able to do crater cultism i believe it's called it for her and it just gives you rev points yeah so you know, you're able to just go ahead and cast those spells right then and there. all right I must have to say that my first 24 hours of gameplay was with Olivia, so it was easy, medium, just poison and fire guard and Healy Whisper gameplay. Uh, I wish I had a better time like that one. I, I, I wish I had a good time with <laughs> Olivia like you, but it, I, I've spent my 30 hours hating the game and just wanting to install the game. So I'm really happy that you're having a good time, Ethan. See, that just makes me sad, Raccoon, because we both know Olivia's best girl. It took a while. Most knowledge. This comment is from Voyage Voyage Rogue 1137 from the video. How to save Tanaka day one, day two, day three, all days covered, where I destroy my mind trying to find the best way to save Tanaka without using RPG Maker, which took me a lot, by the way. Took me a lot. It says you can just use the sewers to get to the city super easily to get Niels to move. All right. So I cover in the video that if it is day one morning, day one afternoon, day one night, and you get needles out of this, uh, the spawn, right? And you 
don't really go to the su uh, to the bunker where Tanaka gets killed, you will lose Abela. And losing Abela is very important because you can, if you lose Abela, it's going to be really difficult. You can get Marco and completely skip that and get Nils to move away. But I believe Tanaka is still there if you go day one morning. So you're going to be losing Abela. So you are sacrificing Abela for the fact that you are needing to kill the clown, let's say. This comment is really, it's really difficult to follow though because there's a lot of what's and if that I actually responded in the video itself because it's a very difficult way to keep this guy alive. But what do you what do you have to say on the on this comment, Seth? What what were your thoughts? Um, I do agree with him uh, to some certain extent. I believe that you should always at least go to grab Abella first because, as I believe you explained in this video, if not one of your other ones. You can still grab Abella and then leave immediately thereafter and not trigger Tanaka being killed. From there, you're able to just go straight into the sewers uh, from next door, especially if you got like a small key, you know, because you can just go to the first like abandoned shack in rundown village and just start going into the basement or sewers rather. Yeah, uh, that's pretty much the video. <laughs> yeah, I say that get Abella, leave and just go through the sewers and that's it. Boom, you see. All right. And boom, there you go, you got it. Yeah. From the same video, we have, I love that you named the character Tanaka Please Don't Die from Live Liver Enjoyer. Liver Enjoyer, that's a, good, that's a good name. So there's a story behind this. Whenever I was doing the Saving Tanaka Day 1, 2, and 3, I was at my limit because I had to restart the game many times because I could not find Tanaka. And every single time I saw him, he died. He was dead. And I didn't know what the heck to do to save him or how to get him out of there or where to find him. And it was a really difficult thing to do. Because of that, I named myself Tanaka, please don't die. And I was just at the limit of pure fear and anger. Not hunger, by the way, anger, because I hated that Tanaka was so frail. I agree. Like, especially because saving Tanaka has got to be one of the most tedious side quests in the entirety of Termina. As much as I love Tanaka, I love the dude to death. He does not know how to stay out of trouble. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> This comment is from Justin McDonald 2102 from the video Where's My Pocket Cat? I made that mistake once, took a minute, but I realized what happened eventually. So, uh, about this, I didn't realize what happened and I thought it was a glitch for 37 playthroughs or so that Pocket Cat wasn't there. And I guess that when lighting up a candle would glitch Pocket Cat and he would be gone forever. But nope, it's that whenever you kill that character, then Pocket Cat is gone for the whole game. And I didn't know that for so long. So I felt like an idiot because it happened because the game doesn't tell you anything and it's not something that you made a mistake it's that the game doesn't tell you anything because it doesn't make sense what do you think Sam? yeah i 100 percent agree um i was doing a challenge run for myself what i like to call the night and i was going through systematically just trying to get rid of all contestants except for one very specific one and i was like all right i just killed this person time to go to pocket cat you know grab a few final things uh and i go to like you know the museum where you're supposed to find them and everything and he's gone. I was like, what the hell is happening? And I believe I came to you, Raccoon, and that's whenever you told me this story for the first time. I was like, oh yeah, if you kill this in, uh, this character, he's gone. It's like, serious? Why do they not explain this? Yeah, and it, it took me so long. I, 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 we, I just think, thought it was a glitch. <clears throat> to be honest, did it make sense? It was yeah. weird. But yeah, let's not say the name of the guy. They're going to they're gonna find out some way. Don't worry about it. Exactly. <laughs> or watch a video. <laughs> Deimos says, ah yes, you can shoot off the lock of Lucky Tanaka, he will not lose his head in a bunker for now at least. It comes from the video Gate Skip, where I show how to skip Old Town by shooting the lock of the gate with a shotgun, which is a very important thing that you should know now, because it took 9 months for people to notice that you can do that, but yes, it's a really good thing. So I should have known this when I was doing the Tanaka video because that would have helped a lot, to be honest. That would have helped a lot, to be honest, to make it easier <laughs> for me to save him. But alas, I didn't know. And yes, you can easily do that. And I'm amazed that we can still find new stuff from Miro that has been added in the demo, by the way. So you can actually find the depth spot still in the demo, thankfully, to be able to get the ammo as well as the sniper. 
the bash sticks and the ball cutters but in the demo this wasn't added so this probably the shotgun in the gate probably has been added recently in the latest patch maybe but because i have no idea though to be honest but what do you think about this set my main question is so we we tested it on the main gate in old town right does it work on the other gate as well or is it just no this one no, no one thing that i actually got a question uh, asked a lot is does it work with a sniper or a pistol no uh, can you use it on the gate? No. Can you use it anywhere else? No. It's only this place. And that's it. Which is amazing. That's sad. Yeah. It's great, but yeah. Uh, one thing that really got me, and I, I messaged you as soon as I watched this video, like the persona music, like after you turn towards the camera, that one broke me. That that made me laugh out oh, loud. Oh, she made it. Like, yeah. That's from the short yeah. version. I love it. This is a comment from the video where Fapolo said, What's my win? And of course, we got him with a Ligma. It's from Iraji Drago 7010, which goes, That's a killer sound effect triggered by need to press Mickey the Counter. Let me play it again. What, what do you what do you think of this, uh, Seth? Tell me. I honest to God cannot believe that you got Fapolo with a Ligma. Like, the. How, like, today's day and age, everyone is so careful about trying to, like, avoid ligmas. And yet he walked straight into it, like, as if it was pre-planned. Again, like, the, my favorite part about it was just All Bones Jones knew immediately what was happening. He started snickering in the bottom corner. Yeah, everyone knew. Parvola was the only one who doesn't know, which is crazy, to be honest. I love it. I'm so, I'm so happy that I'm getting with that, to be honest. I'm still glad. I'm still happy. Oh, trust me. I know, because then immediately after the podcast, you try to get me with one. I'm like, no, I'm not nah, stupid. What do you mean? Nah. Next comment is from Alec Von Mueller. He says, Frappolo is going to go harder now. Hmm. <laughs> I'm waiting. Sorry. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's all I got. Next comment. This is from my community post where I asked if I should make a podcast or not. So this person says, um, as long as you are a media, you're a furry. Says uh, Emperor Adrian 6011. So um, no, I'm not a furry. So I guess I'm not allowed to make the podcast. Is that, is that, is that, is that, does that mean that the podcast is over? Or could, can, I, can I keep going? What do you you know, man, I, I, I think that he has the final say. You know, he's, he's right. You got to admit you're a furry if you're going to want to do a podcast. I mean, you know, I mean, you got at least one of them with uh, for Polo on the uh, Old Gods podcast. I mean, you can't fall for a ligma and not be considered a furry, right? I mean, that's true. You get them and then you get them into the dark side like that. It makes sense. Exactly. Now, for Polo is a furry then, that's what we're saying. I mean, I'm not saying it. Oh. Next question. Nia5648 asks in the same post as before if you had to choose between having a penny that doubled every day, 0.2% faster walk speed as long as you're on a leisurely stroll every day, or a goose that lays no eggs but always comes back next morning killed but not eaten, which would you choose? What a question. I did not expect this question. I, I expected another thing. I would say money. I like money because, well, it's not. Not saying that I like money, but saying that I need the money here in Argentina. So I would say the penny that doubled every day, considering that a penny from the US would be a lot more expensive here than an Argentinian peso. So yeah, I would say the penny. I, I take the penny. I need to live. But what about you, Seth? So I would probably also take the penny. Uh, again, not to do with anything with money, but the fact that... So typically, the stipulation that comes with the, the penny that doubles every single day is that... I, I've heard this question before. It typically comes with the stipulation is that it stops doubling after 30 days. However, in this case, there is no such stipulation. So it just keeps on growing. Uh, I believe that by the end of the 30 days, you have $4 million uh, or something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So personally, I would take the penny. After the one month, I would split that $4 million. Uh, not down the middle, but with uh, people that need it. You know, the needy, my family. Uh, you know what I'm going through. So I'd use some of that to help with that yeah. situation and stuff like Can that. Can I very useful? Yes, very yes, useful. Yes, exactly. So here's a penny. Here you go. Easy. <laughs> so Is it a magic penny? Yeah, pretty easy. I mean, I, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. This comment comes from Kuromi Darklord. Kuromi Darklord. In the video, find, save, and kill. 
Caligura. Well, sorry. Where to find, how to save, and how to Caligura. He asks, how do you save Pav? So, um, Pav is the easiest one to save. He might be in the next video that I'm going to be making, probably. This is close to Henrik, I would say. Uh, the way that you save Pav is that you do not confront him in any other times that you can kill him. And you also, when you get to the tower, he will be down by Kaiser. Kaiser will take him out. You need to just not stomp on his body, have a bandage on you, patch him up, and he will be at the train for the rest of the game. Just that. Do not stomp on him. Do not fight against him. Allow him to Allow him to Allow him to everyone. I will hit to anybody, but don't confront them. Easy as that. That is how you save him. And I'm gonna, like I said before, I'm gonna make a video so you don't have to make those choices and you can actually save him without him dealing with anyone in the game. So hopefully you wait for that video. Next comment is from the video Easy Mode, which is infinite saves mode that he made for Fear Hunger 1 and 2. This is from the first one. Absolute legend says, buddy, buddy. Bonus bat 8076 with a beautiful accent. Thank you for the mod, my friend. So, no worries, buddy. I'm, I'm glad that you use it. I'm, glad, I'm really happy that you're using it. But I'm, I had this question like a while ago, which is should I have made this mod? Was it a good idea for me to make a mod that allows people to save as much as they want and pretty much to cheat the game? And I don't know how you feel about this. Uh, how do you feel about just having an infinite save to be able to go through the game and learn from it? How, how so does it I go for you? I feel like it's a very good learning crutch, you know, like it gives people the opportunity to learn the ins and outs of the game without having to go through the process of dying and dying and dying and dying. Uh, I feel like that's the same reason why people tend to make themselves overpowered in Souls-like games, you know, like they cheat in a whole bunch of levels and everything like that, so the way they can learn the ins and outs of the game, you know, because not everyone has a whole bunch of free time to continuously do the same thing over and over and over again, so uh, I'm, I'm personally fine with this kind of mod, at least, you know, for like a learning crush. Yeah, I I had, like, I took a lot of time, because you can see the video, uh, let me check exactly when the video was done, I mean, May, sorry. So this video was done five months ago and i started my youtube channel nine to ten months ago so it took me a lot to consider making this so you can see that my mindset was always like mm, should i mm, should i i don't know if i should mm, i feel bad but the more people that commented me the videos the more people that wanted me to make that sort of thing so i made it so it does show that comments sell a video so if you need any kind of material any video anything like that just comment down below and let me know what you need and i'm gonna be providing you with it in the future of course next comment from psycho3276 from the video gateskip smt yeah so i don't really have any videos on my youtube channel because i did it when i wasn't a youtuber at the time i seen like i dropped uh making youtube videos but i played shin megami tensei 3 and i played shin megami tensei 4 i did not finish 4 because i felt like it was dragging for a long time but i finished 3 two times in a row and i loved it a lot and i gotta say it's one of the best shin megami tensei games even better than persona i would say because it feels like it pushes the engine and the combat system to the limit in my opinion i think it's just an amazing game i hope uh, uh, more people can get to play it because now it's on PC, actually. What do you think, Seth? What's your experience with SMT? So, I played Shin Megami Tensei 3 and I've played Shin Megami Tensei 5. Uh, of course, other than the more popular, well, I wouldn't say more popular, but uh, other than the popular, you know, Persona series. Uh, I love Nocturne. Uh, funny story about Nocturne, actually. Uh, so, this happened 10 or so years ago. I went into the store, a game store called Game Exchange, uh, and I just beaten Persona 3. I was like, hey, I just beat this game called, you know, Persona 3. I'm looking for another JRPG with that same exact style. They were like, oh, yeah, you know, we got this this here game called uh, Shimigami Tensei 3 Nocturne. I was like, you know what? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll give it a try. And that was my first introduction to Nocturne. Uh, if I may speak frankly, screw that Matador fight still. That That is the biggest spike in difficulty in gaming that I have seen to this day. Because you have to go in prepared, otherwise you were screwed. Yeah, I feel that like you were just stuck with that guy if you had not the knowledge and you didn't have the patience because that, that is just such a different game to compare to the others. Yeah. But yeah, like Persona would not like get you stuck in one place. I feel like at least. <clears throat> Uh, where you feel like you are worthless. It's just like Shimmery Tensei Nocturne, I feel like. And I like that a lot, to be honest. I like that a lot. Hi. Next comment is from Silver209, which is from the video Moldy Apartments Guide, where I give you the code of the Moldy Apartment. In the video, I actually go through how to get the codes. Uh, 
but it seems like Silver wasn't able to follow up with my guide. Maybe I will have to remake the video at some point. So they are pretty much with this comment. They didn't get how I go through getting each of the numbers and it's quite easy really. First of all, you need to get the get to the statue room where there's a horse, push the statue into the hole, break the hole, then go down, pick up the notebook and in that notebook it tells you the order on which of the rooms you gotta be using them. So for example, it says the guys that looks at the astros and it is like at the at the stars. And that would be the room with the astros and the stars in it. The guy with the baggard that just moved in is the room with the beds on the floor where someone is moving in. And if you check on the entrance of each room, it tells you a number. So it should be like that, right? For example, supposedly, the room with the plants, you see that it's at the first, uh, like the first thing that is mentioned in the diary. And you check on that room and on the door, it says, for example, six, right? Well, six will go first and then the next one and then the next one and the next one. That's how it works. Have you had trouble with this set? Because actually it sucked a lot. I think I spent like one hour with this puzzle too and it's the first time I did it. So I'm not gonna lie. I had no patience for this puzzle. So I did what I typically do in games like this sometimes. Uh, they give you like some of the numbers to begin with. I just brute force it. And it worked? So yeah, and it worked. Uh, I just like put in, because you know me, I'm a math guy. So so it's like you got four different numbers and there's only so many different combinations that you can do with the four different numbers i believe it's like 64 or something like that so you know just come up with those different equations put each one of those in and then eventually you'll get it and even then like if it's like only like you know like the if it's the nine variant like as you said in the video then it's even easier yeah yeah so. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> eh. How, how how long did it take you to brute force 64 combinations, I think, you said? Mm, 20 minutes or so, maybe. Interesting. Okay, okay. So your sanity was just as low as mine, I guess. Mentally. Yeah. In the game. It was just like, alright. It was like, alright, like 11, 6, 3, 13. No, okay. Uh, it was 11, 3, 6, 11. No, okay. And then just go from there. That sucks. I meant, you just gotta mentally check off each and every one. That sucks. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. Whatever. See, I'm back from the old school days, whenever you actually had a piece of pen and paper to write down the equation for old school games, so that's just me. Do you still do it? Uh, mentally, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Alright. Next question. Uh, uh, uh. Next comment comes from Tangerine Enjoyer 8869 from the video Ragnarok S ending Hero Hunger 1. First time that I played Hero Hunger 1, where I played Ragnarok S ending. He says that watching your gameplay got me thinking about the bed mechanics. In other games, they're supposed to be Haven. Haven? Haven. 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 Safe spot. But in Fear and Hunger, the player has two choices. Lie down and sleep, which is often a death sentence, or tear the blanket apart in order to survive. The characters later fight the bed to combat the temptation of sleep, which is deadly. So they destroy the bed. For few users, usage as well, making the bed a literal enemy. So, um, I think making bed mimics would be very interesting, and that could be a nice mod to make if anyone is interested in making a mod or you have a chance to have a bed mimic that will fight you. That will be very interesting when you're ready to just call it because you clear the whole room and boom, you get a mimic that is a bed. However, one thing I gotta say is that I am impressed about the fact that removing the blankets doesn't do anything because I thought it would like lower your mind or something like that. Not every to give you a better chance of sleeping or something like that, but it doesn't do anything. I'm really impressed that they did that in Fear High 1, but they didn't really do that much on Chew as part for a few cases where sleeping in a bed can get you in trouble, but not as much travel as getting the crow model to show up or an elite guard i would say for the future they need to Miro needs to uh change how the best work to make them more deadly because they're very safe especially if you know that the train bed it's very safe once you go through that i think there will be a lot less saving going on if that happens which i love that to be honest behind one made me feel completely different when i knew that i couldn't save compared to when i could save the game it it was completely different to go through that experience and I honestly do miss the times when I didn't know how to save because I finished the whole game. Um, well, not I finished the whole game, I finished up to Mahabre, which what that felt like the whole game to me without saving. And it felt really good when I finally got the infinite save bed and that is just an amazing feeling to be honest. And I love that. I love it a lot to be honest. I, I have no idea how a feeling of a player would be to go through the whole game without saving because I didn't have that and I wish I would have that. What do you think how best work? Uh, said, are they 
how you want it to in Fear and Hunger 1? Um, in Fear and Hunger 1, they're fine. And in my personal opinion, I think that they're even more fine in Termina. And the, the reason why I think that is because think about all the stuff that you're really going through in Termina. There's a whole lot more areas. There's a whole lot more enemies. You know, more than likely, you're going to die a lot more often in Termina, especially if it's your first time playing it. Because let's, let's think about it this way, you know, Raccoon. Uh, bobbies. If you're playing by yourself, each hit from a bobby does 30 damage. That means around 30 to 35 damage. That means if you get unlucky and all three of them hit you, you're dead. Yeah, I guess they're so, like elite guards in a way. Yeah, and there's a whole lot more of, you know, bobbies than there are elite guards in the first. So I feel like the beds in the first game are justified in the way that the game is set up and even so more so in the second game because again on the first game there's two different safe beds but you have to do you know really really difficult battles to do them the chrome mauler and then you know the screen the skin green so i feel like it's balanced you know so to speak maybe maybe i just didn't have anything who knows i don't know maybe who knows i found a vela early that's pretty much how i broke the game with the second game to be honest maybe <laughs> this question this comment comes from how to skip Old Town from the user Madlast9575. Very snappy and smooth editing. I'm mostly someone that lurks that doesn't comment often. But seeing your channel grow has been an awesome experience. Which is the best record? Nowhere to go but up. As a fellow member of Latin America, I'm very proud of you. By the way, I'm Brazilian. Thanks so much for that. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been mostly learning how to make editing like this, not only because of my Levi.exe video, but because of my university. In university, usually no one would know how to make videos and they would produce these kind of videos that were not even worth watching. So every single time I would see that, I would also make mine. I will make audio with that. I will put songs in them. I will make edits. I will listen to the song, try to cut it as soon as the song just blows up, stuff like that. I really like making YouTube videos, mostly because of that experience that I had with my university. And it has helped me a lot through it. In terms of content of the video, I'm surprised about the fact that there is a dialogue for the title in the game. Maybe it's a deleted event or some kind of, di it feels different from the debug tiles from Fear One. So um, about that, this is also in the demo. So if you actually load up the demo of Fear Hunger 2, you can still find the dev spot, which is pretty impressive. This is the reason why I think that it's not going to be deleted from the game. Maybe it's going to get... <sighs> Maybe it's going to be developed further and it's going to have more text and it's going to show you what you're going to be getting. But who knows, to be honest. It's honestly such a weird coincidence that this is also in the demo. And the shotgun, shotgun in the gate in... Uh, Fear Hunger 2 in the official version, it is included, but not in the demo. Honestly, there's a lot of changes that Mido does behind our backs, and maybe there's more that we haven't found, to be honest. Hopefully I get to find more for you guys. And if you guys know, of course, of this, let me know. I'll make a video and I'll create you about it because you guys are the ones who are making this community grow as well. Thank you so much. This comment comes from the video, Despawn Enemies short version, which you are able to despawn Belen in the game if you do a certain trick. Vamos que se puede! 4622 says, Banger Powats! And Emperor Adrian6011 says he's not a furry. So, numero uno, uh, the comment is referring to the One Piece reference, which Kuma is one of the characters in One Piece, has these pads that are able to teleport you around the world if they hit you. And they're a pretty important part of the story, but I cannot tell you because it's a spoiler. Um, but I kind of want to combo into the comment of Adrian, which I already answered before, which is he's not a furry. I'm going to explain to you guys exactly what's going on with this topic because I've had it a lot and I think it has to be explained, to be honest. So the thing about this is that I don't want to be part of any fandom because mostly, most of the time, fandoms, like for example, being among... Um, otaku, being a gamer, being a furry, being a brony, anything like that, usually entails to you being shown as a specific kind of group and that usually means that you accept immediately what that group is doing, right? The furry fandom, I do not support it, sadly. Most of the furry fandom ends up having these kind of reactions that are friendly enough to the point that I don't think I am part of it. I usually 
try my best to be friendly, but they are to the point that they will usually completely go overboard this friendly factor and I don't enjoy it. I do not enjoy it. I don't have a connection with them mentally to me. I don't want to be connected with them. I respect them by not saying anything to them, but I don't want to be marked as them. That's mostly how it is. That's why I always say that I'm not a furry because I don't want to be part of that fandom. And anyone who watches anime probably knows what I'm talking about when I say you don't want to be otaku. Anyone who plays it probably says I want to be a gamer because you usually end up with a stereotype, stereotype of people who are going to be doing the exact thing in a group and usually when you're a furry you end up doing stuff that I don't enjoy but there's people who enjoy that and that's completely fine but it's not what I'm going to be doing and what are you making. If I was a furry this whole channel would be completely different and I don't want to be a furry. I want to be open with you guys. I'm a gamer. No, I'm just kidding, sorry. <laughs> ¿Hablas español de pura casualidad? Y... Está complicado explicarte la razón. Este comentario viene de Audio Spikes Fix Mode, donde a ayudo a que la comunidad no le agarre un Tanairus, se dice en inglés creo, donde se quedan sorditos, o que el Fear Hunger 1 viene con sonidos más fuertes de que el 2. No sé por qué viene tan fuerte, la verdad, y están hechos para matarte el oído. Eh, sí, eh, el grifo, el grifo locote 1692. Hablo español, espero que te guste mi video en inglés, porque tristemente no puedo cambiar el idioma, ya que mi comunidad es mayormente inglesa. ¿Inglesa? Hmm. Este comentario viene de un video donde muestro un mod que traduce Fira Hange al español. Buenas amigos, nuevo sub. ¿Será que funciona en Android? Me preguntaron esto muchas veces, la verdad, y no tengo ni idea cómo funciona en Android Fira Hange, pero cada vez que me preguntan, yo le digo que sí, porque hay muchos comentarios ahí abajo de este tipo que dicen que anda en español y anda en Android. Y yo digo, ¿será que es el mismo mod? Así que creo yo que para mí anda. La macana es que no sé cómo se hace, porque yo no tengo Android que pueda correr el juego, así que no le puedo hacer un video de ello. Si alguien puede hacer un video para explicar que funciona, me nos serviría bastante, la verdad, porque sacaría muchas dudas de mis comentarios. Muchas gracias por el comentario. Diego Norris, 8761. Muchas gracias, amigo. Aaron Suchi, 5754, dice, Capo, la gente que <coughs> hace esas cosas esas cosas siempre ayuda un montón. Aunque no haya hecho, por lo menos vi este parche desde tu video y yo que no tiene un choto inglés me recibe. Bueno, eh, esto siempre lo digo por la duda, pero yo no hice la traducción. Lo digo muchísimas veces. Me alegra un montón de que yo, subiendo el video, ya te ayude bastante para poder encontrarlo, porque eso más que nada lo que quería yo. Quiero que la gente reconozca el, el parche este está hecho por eh, personas que yo la verdad que conozco hace mucho tiempo y quiero que crezcan en este tipo de proyectos. Por eso mismo le hice el video. En su momento también voy a hacer un video del Final Hunger 1 en español, pero no encuentro a la gente que hizo el parche y me gustaría que, me, que se comuniquen conmigo para poder hacer un video y hacer que su mod tenga más vistas y más uso porque yo sé que mucha gente que quiere jugar al español, al Final Hunger 1 en español, pero no pueden. Siguiente comentario. Dice Esteban Peloso 9796 dice Buen video, bro. Gracias por traer el, por fin el juego español. Ojalá saques video de Fira Hanger en español. Le ayudaré bastante. Gracias, pa. No puedo, tristemente. Eh, mi canal se da vuelta en el inglés y a veces puedo llegar a agarrar el español y decirte alguna que otra cosa acá en este video. Pero la mayoría de contenido que estoy haciendo es el idioma. Lo que yo veo en esto es que básicamente no puedo dar vuelta y tirar mi contenido del español a mis usuarios en inglés porque haría un efecto totalmente que molestaría a la gente que ve mis videos. Esperas un video mío que salga, sale y sale en español, puta. La gente que sale solo en inglés no lo va a ver. Ves un video que sale, esperas contenido en español, boom, inglés, puta, no vas a ver eso porque no sabes inglés. Así que básicamente me tengo que quedar con un idioma. Eh, voy a hacer esta sección cortita acá como esto de leer los comentarios en español e inglés porque quiero que las personas que me siguen en español sepan lo que me cuesta. Y podría hacer un canal aparte y empezar todo de cero y hacer todas las guías en español, pero me costaría mucho y apenas, apenas puedo pero ustedes en los comentarios abajo me pueden vender cualquier idea y yo voy a intentar hacer dependiendo de cuánta gente soporte esa, esa decisión. La otra manera también es que la mayoría de personas que me ayudan, ellas ya los conozco hace mucho tiempo. Eh, estoy hace 10 meses haciendo videos y la mayoría de mi comunidad es inglés. No puedo tirarme de una al español tristemente. O ojalá entiendan esto, la verdad. Disculpen al mismo tiempo. Muy, muy. Disculpen mucho, la verdad. Disculpen, disculpen. Este comentario viene de Agus Maldonado 9244 del mi video Mazo XSM Mode Guide, que es una guía de Mazo Mode, que está medio completa. Le falta más sal, pero voy a hacer de vuelta en otro momento. Dice, <coughs> lo único que me da gracia es que la mayoría de las personas que sobre veo 
de guías, que veo sobre guías, perdón, siempre hablan en inglés a pesar de ser latinos, españoles y no hablan su idioma nativo, cosa que es muy difícil de identificar. La macana de esto es que es re importante que una persona se meta en el juego con el idioma que está el juego introduciéndolo. Además que el inglés recontra de mil vende comparado con el español la mayoría del tiempo. Y hay muchas mejores formas de comunicarse en inglés rápidamente que en el español, en mi opinión. Usualmente el español se pierde al decir cosas. El inglés usualmente va derecho porque tiene muchos, muchas formas de decir las cosas de forma cortita. Que vos te puedes ya tirar una palabra y listo, está ya como ligma, listo. Sabes lo que es ligma, pumba. Eh, por ejemplo, nada, no, qué sé yo. Eh, es complicado. Eh, era básicamente cuando yo empezaba era decidir voy a español o voy en inglés y me tiré por el inglés porque yo amo el inglés. Es por eso. No haría otro canal en español. Me costaría muchísimo la verdad. Y ya intenté buscar subtitular mi video en español, pero no me da el tiempo para hacerlo en este momento. Ojalá pudiera conseguir a alguien que subtitule mis videos, pero no sé ni cómo lo haría. No sé cómo haría para hacer que eso siquiera sea posible. Y no sé cómo le pagaría, así que es complicada la cosa. Porque estoy en Argentina. No hay plata acá. <risa> Tiene una pregunta extra. ¿Cómo se evita que el dios de la luna te marque? No se evita. Te va a marcar igual. Tenés que meterte dentro de la casa para que no te queme y listo. Es básicamente eso. Esquivar la luna y listo. No hay mucha cosa. Esquivale, esquivale, esquivale. No vayas al bosque. No vayas al bosque porque te va a quemar. Así que ahí va la cosa. Suerte, che. El siguiente comentario viene de rukiv 0130 Viene del video How to save Tanaka Day 1, 2, 3. Todos los días cubridos. Básicamente, ¿cómo se habla Tanaka? 327, esta es una referencia a Boquita. Vamos, carajo, boca mierda. Ay, Dios, no te puedo poner el video acá porque me van a cagar variando. Digamos que safé eh, del copyright de Boquita. Porque lo usé en otro video Que no, no lo puedo poner acá porque me va a comer el copyright de vuelta Y me, me, me pegaron un copyright de arriba abajo Y me devolvieron el culo para arriba abajo Así que no voy a vender de vuelta el musiquita de Boquita Me la jugué bastante bien Porque este video no cagó con copyright El otro sí, el otro no tiene nada que ver Pero este sí, este sí es importante para mí Porque este me comió como, como la vida Así que sí, Boquita, la más grande Este comentario viene de Dante's GTFO 1511 En mi video How to Dodge Run Teals que explico cómo esquivar a los ronteals de Final Hunger 2. Matías, ¿no? Chabón, te pasaste. No solo sos un genio para con el juego y tienes un dominio del inglés increíble, sino que encima me pusiste la música de los juicios de la rompa. Pero pasé todos. El primero lo jugué en español, pero el 2 y el 3 tuve que jugar en inglés. Igual es algo que agradezco porque mi inglés mejoró mucho gracias a esos juegos, como el Danga Rompa o el Virtuous Last Reward. Me está resultando muy instructivo tu canal. Antes de seguir este comentario, voy a responder a lo que dijo en, eh, anteriormente, que es eh, muchas gracias, la verdad, que te ha sido muchísimo en mi canal. Me ayuda bastante eh, en leer este tipo de comentarios porque me hace sentir de que estoy haciendo un cambio en la comunidad de Hanke y en la comunidad de juegos de jugadores perdón. me ayuda muchísimo saber que no eh, mis videos no están tirados para que la gente lo ignore sería o sea, que están siendo vistos por gente y ayuda a la gente de diario porque estos videos me toman qué sé yo uno o dos días para hacer a veces me toman una semana a veces me toman un año perdón a, a veces me toman un mes a veces me toman un mes y depende mucho de Cuánto le pongo de fuerza Cuanto más contenido hago Menos contenido tengo para hacer claramente del juego Pero voy a intentar seguir Hasta que no tenga nada más que cubrir Y en su momento quizá me vuelva loco y haga en español Un canal, quién sabe, veremos Y hablando de ropa, sí, me lo pasé todo yo también Y los amo bastante El ropa 1, 2 y 3 son Uno de los mis juegos más favoritos que tengo y honestamente lo jugaría si es que pudiera borrar toda mi mente que tengo. En especial el 3, que el 3 es hermoso. Lo amo. Soy un programador buscando su primera experiencia laboral. <coughs> y el inglés es una parte importante de nuestra profesión. Yo quería ser programador en ese momento. Eh, era entre ser... Entre, entre estudiar profesor de inglés o programación. Yo soy malo con la matemática. Bastante malo. Así que me diré por profesor de inglés. Y obviamente youtuber, como ves ahora. Así que te deseo el mejor, ojalá que la puedas meter bien fuerte. Te deseo el mejor y ojalá que la puedas hacer re bien, porque eh, veo que tu inglés es bueno si te pasas te dan a romper honestamente. Es un juego re jodido <ríe> en inglés, obviamente. Así que además de aprender sobre el juego, ejercicio me escucha. Ahora estoy enfocando en lo del laburo y por eso empecé a jugar al término. Cuando tenga un par de momentos de paz, me voy a sentar tranquilo y le voy a dar masa a esta joyeta al gaming. Un abrazo y mejor deseo para vos. Muchas gracias de vuelta con el comentario. Y yo aprendí inglés con juegos y me reforcé hablando con una comunidad en inglés y abriéndome de forma que solo podía usar el inglés para comunicarme. De forma de con mi voz y con el texto claramente. Si necesitas más clases de inglés, si necesitas aprender inglés, metete con una persona en inglés, hablar en inglés. Si, la, si, sal, si salís mal diciéndole algo que nada que ver, métele igual. No importa, caete, matate, metele, metele adelante y vas a meter bien fuerte lo que es el inglés. 
porque está en vos que vos aprendas forzándote en un lugar donde vas a tener que utilizar ese idioma y solo ese idioma. De vuelta, muchísimas gracias por el comentario, Dante. Y ojalá que te esté yendo re bien. <risa>